No, I want that piece. Where'd it go? Hey, good morning, everyone. Hi, good morning. How are you on this Tuesday, April 10th? How's it going for everybody? So I feel like the weatherman, right? I decided all I do is talk about the weather on this feed and how ridiculous is that? Uh, you hardly need to hear about the weather in New York City, but just so you know, it's rainy and overcast. So anyway, Heidi, I was just thinking about you. How are you? It's good to see, oh wait, I'm sorry, that's not Heidi, that's Linda. See, Linda, I need my glasses. How are you? It's good to see you here, but I have been thinking about Heidi Lenino and wondering where you are, Heidi. Hey, Jean, hey, Ruth, hey, Jamie, hey, Paolo. Good morning, this is Smart Start. We start our day with some art and go from there, right? So today, as promised, we were talking about Marsden Hartley. Um, and I am actually um, hoping John Haber is on the feed because I am going to use his review. We posted it uh, last week, but um, I actually, I, I want to read from his review of the Hartley show that was at um, the, uh, the Met Breuer. Ruth, I hope you don't have bad weather. I'm here in Cali. Oh God, it's been gorgeous in California, right? My sister went back home. Um, I, I met somebody yesterday who was on their way home. Hey, John, how are you? Good to see you. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, hey, Lori, how are you? Yeah, it's just been not good weather here. So, John, I am going to use your, your um, review today. I'm reading pieces of it to go over Hartley. So interestingly enough, last week when we started, we were talking we were talking about Hartley in relationship to Eugene O'Neill's biography and um, that summer in Provincetown, that first summer that they were there and built the Provincetown Theater. Um, Hartley was a, a big player in, in that, in, in that kind of, that, that beautiful summer in, in um, Provincetown where Eugene O'Neill, John Reed, um, Marsden Hartley, uh, Charles Demuth, other uh, all the artists were there, uh, kind of creating this new American theater, and I think that they actually understood very well what they were creating. So, hey, Mark Harris, how are you? Stephanie, how are you? So, um, and you know, for my way of thinking, Kathleen, good morning. It is so good to see you. Um, for my way of thinking, I wasn't a big Hartley fan. Uh, just. Again, it, if I don't like the work, it's probably, as somebody once pointed out on this feed, I don't relate to it in a certain way. But now that I've kind of looked at it more and more, obviously, you know, it, that's what happens. You see things more and more, and um, I can appreciate it better. And so Smart Start for me also is challenging myself to look at things that I wouldn't necessarily uh, see so I want to John let's take a look and then John please feel free to add yeah yeah I know that John I know that you know it's just not something I'm drawn to I don't know if it's the flatness what I was drawn to initially was the biography and this notion of creating um, this province town as this theater you know, this American theater, this new American theater and how everybody was involved. Oh my goodness, Willie Cole. 
Willie Cole, are you on my feed? Ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest artists, contemporary artists, Mr. Willie Cole just showed up on this feed. Willie, this is Smart Start and we start our day with some art and oh my goodness, what I love to cover your work. Willie Cole, I saw your show at the Bronx Museum so long ago with the doors and it still lives within me. Uh, what a delight to have you on this feed. Heidi, good morning. Hey Maggie, good morning everyone. So let's take a look at Marsden Hartley a little bit and then uh, read from um, John Haber's review from the Met Breuer show and I'm going to show you the first piece that Maggie so um, graciously posted last week on the feed and I really really enjoyed this piece a lot so um yes so let's see okay so john writes marston hartley in maine this is where we are at the whitney right in his last years martin marston hartley tried to remake himself as in his words the painter of maine it would have surprised his most ardent admirers but then he still could not get over his fears of banishment maybe the whitney museum would understand it gives its permanent collection a home as we were, we, where we are, sorry about that, John, but with full awareness that no understanding of art or America is permanent. I love that, John. I'm a huge John Haber writing fan. I think you all know that. Uh, so I'm going to go back and forth from John's review to what he's saying here on the feed. Hi, Stephen. I still feel he's too conservative, less willing than many of his peers to engage modernism or the New York scene. That's very interesting. But he's of interest for his eccentricity and for two unique points. Maybe we'll get into. Okay, good. Good morning. Um, good morning, Ruth. Um, the temporary rehanging of the collection as where we are is still up. Okay, so we all have to go see it, right? Good morning, Mario. How are you? We all have to go see it. Okay, the Whitney alludes early and often, often to a poem in the darkness of the world at war. And it opens with paintings about a previous war. Yet it has space for the comforts of home, including two different paintings of room heated by a stove. It has no room for Stuart Davis and American Cubism, some of the leading lights of the Ashcan School, one of my favorites, the Ashcan School, an abstract expressionist, or the showpieces of pop art, but repeat appearances by Edward Hopper and a renewed emphasis on race and gender. Who we are then is changing, but not all at once, which is only reasonable. It is less out of change, the face of America of American art than to change how one sees it. In other words, it is even now looking for home. John, John, this is so good. John, very similar to the Algonquin painting. Oh, interesting. Good morning, Eunice, how are you? Good morning, Judy, very nice to have you on this feed. This is Smart Start, start our day with some art. So John, this is so good. All right, so let's continue to read. I'm gonna change the painting and we're gonna to continue to read uh, this review. I think Tuesday is now going to be Haber Review Day. Okay, I wanna switch this one, okay? I'm gonna read you some more. You know, here's the deal. You have art and you get to see a show. And then when you can read about it from someone like John Haber, it enriches it so much more, right? Doesn't it, isn't it? And it all becomes like, um, the other day when I was on Cheddar and talking about uh, going to galleries and they said to me, how do we go to galleries or whatever? And I said, look around and read the press release, read things about, you know, it's enriching the experience as well. Um, just like a curator can put together a show and enrich, um, kind of contextualize an artist's work, a writer can bring it to life in a different way. And that's what John's reviews have always done for me. Okay. Marston Hartley looked for home in Maine. He sought a sense of place in its mountains and shores. He sought a sense of community in its churches and farmsteads. He sought its livelihood in its lumberjacks and Acadians. At age 60, he was returning after a lifetime of fresh starts and unanticipated displacements. Is it any wonder that he ended up painting only turmoil and longing? Ha! Hartley is better known for just that turmoil and longing, only in another country and in wartime. 
the painter of Maine made his name with paintings of German military gear and the Iron Cross. You know what, John? That's what we were going to do this week. To this week, I was supposed to post the German military gear. Um, if anybody's on the feed and they can quickly look up the German um, piece that John's re referring to, you can post it, please. Thank you. Okay. But if not, it's okay. You could just listen. I could post it later. There are thick lines and strong contrast between between bright yellow, red, and black have ties to urban American realists like George Bellows and John Sloan. Love John Sloan and George Bellows. Yet they have only gained attention since then with the seemingly postmodern reduction of a portrait of a portrait of a German officer to surfaces and signs. They have also taken on a greater relevance, uh, relevance yes, with their frank homoeroticism, which I found very interesting in other work of his as well. Marston Hartley's main, though, focuses instead on landscape, all but devoid of humanity. Hmm. So let's look at that. John says, just in case you're confused, she's, oh, thank you, John. Thank you so much. If anybody's confused, right. Thanks, John. Okay, so then let's go to another one. This, this notion of devoid from humanity is very interesting. I'm going to skip to this one, okay, and then we're going to come back. Um, and I want to hear what everyone says, okay? He took a long time to find a home. Born Edmund Hartley, he lost his mother while young, followed family to Cleveland in his teens, studied there, and in New York, introduced himself to modern art in Berlin and Paris, and exhibited with Alfred Stieglitz in a gallery devoted to American moder moderism, modernism. Sorry. For yet another disappointment, he broke with Steve Stieglitz as well because he would not settle in New York. Even after World War I, um, even after World War I obliged him to leave Germany, he kept traveling. He saw Maine's Mount, I don't even know how to pronounce this Mount, I'm sorry, Katadin, through the lens of the Alps and of Mount St. Victoire for Paul Cezanne. He saw its seacoasts and storms through Winslow Homer and Japanese prints. John, I love that notion that he sees Maine's Mount through the lens of Mount St. Victoire of Paul Cezanne and the seacoast and the storms through Winslow Homer and Japanese prints. Beautiful. Still, he had reclaimed Maine as his own once before. He moved back for a while around the turn of the last century and he joined an artist colony that encouraged an interest in American folk art. I think we could see that too, clearly. There he painted on glass along with his favored pa uh, paperboard and masonite. As curators Randall Griffey, Elizabeth Finch, and Donna and Cassidy map the connections and disconnections, and the show falls in two with a huge gap in between. The first half amounts to barely four years starting in 1907, the last from 1937 to 1942. That's what we're looking at. Within those divisions, it proceeds less chronologically than by style and theme. So let's look. Let me see what you guys are saying. I love this. Um, it looked, I looked it in the, oh, thank you, John. Did, katachin, katachin. Ah, ah. But we're just used to me bastardizing every pronunciation of everything here in the morning, aren't we? Thank you. Hi, Anne, how are you? Ruth, this one of the ocean I like better than the others. I can see the eccentricity in his work more than others. Yeah, I, I, that, that notion that John brings up, that eccentricity, I love that because we can see that, right? I can see that. You know, John, what I am really interested in in, in what you've written is this notion that, um, you know, there, we have the Ashcan school kind of happening at the time and he kind of doesn't join more of this, right? Um, and modernism, I, I really think that that's a, a very interesting perspective. And then, of course, how he's looking at um, the mountains and the storms. I, seeing it one through Winslow Homer and Japanese prints and one through Paul Cezanne. I think this is quite, quite brilliant. I love that. So does everybody see how, um, a, I, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here. My God, you're an artist and such. Hey, Roy. Hey, Mira. Um, you know, a review, so to speak can just enhance a body of work that we're looking at. Even though John is not per se a fan of Hartley, he just, the way he writes about it, gives us context, but also brings it to life and 
adds to it in, in such an amazing way, I think. So, all right, I'm going to continue. Let me, I'm going to shift to another piece where we do find some humanity, um, literally. Let me go to, where did I leave off? Okay, here we go. Uh, okay. We, so we left off with the division, it proceeds less chronologically than by style and theme. That can suggest an artistic development that is just not there, but it clarifies what drew Hartley to New England all along. He starts with a dark, thickly textured and nearly monochromatic seascape. Let me go back to that since we're now gonna read about it. Sorry about that, guys. Um, you can see I don't choreograph this, that, keep it that tight in the morning. Um, seascape. On loan from the library in Maine, a blackness keeps asserting itself in his art. Love that. Even when he picks up post-impressionism a bit late in the game, the bright colors add up to twilight. They also give way to Dark Mountain, a series inspired by Albert Pinker Ryder. I don't think we put this here, John, right? Um, and um, I, we're gonna, I'm going to post that after. He's also, he is already adopting his characteristic composition as well. Dark, uh, dark masses surrounding pools of light framed by brighter strips from earth and sky. Clouds at top appear disturbingly large and houses or farms along the bottom appear unnaturally small. They create a scene of abandonment only intensified by the greater realism of his late work. When he paints a church, it appears as a white wall pierced by dark windows, set unstable and askew. When he paints breakers, they rise in a torrent. When he paints logging country, he finds imposing piles of timber or a log jam. Let's go to the log jam. So you can see that. I should have put this all together in a beautiful, uh, what is it, slideshow. But I didn't, sorry. But I, you know what? On Tuesdays, I'm going to figure it out now. Okay. Um, I'm so sorry. The log jam. When he, he finds impose, right. When he takes up still life, a white seahorse looks larger than life, but unmistakably dead. When he paints the view out the window, its brightness seems cut off irrevocably from the interior. Hartley has found a more muscular art. Wow. He learns to use longer brush strokes harder reds and blues and blacks outline as shadows. If they invite one to compare the landscape to the human body, he, is st he still has his undisguised longings and he paints them too. All right, I wanna go over here as I read more. John, this is so well done. Okay. Loggers appear face on in little more than small swim trunks. Yeah, not in this one. I have that logger in the very small swim trunks. I don't have it. I saw it. I decided not to put it on the feet. I don't know why. It just, yeah. Seemed a little early in the morning. Um, I'm so sorry. I have to know where. Okay. Um, arms akimbo after Cezanne's bathers. Yes, I saw that. Who knew that workmen could cavort half naked with reddish orange flesh? He could be unsettling masculinity or fixated on it. Huh. Does he keep finding models and art as least, at least a generation after their time? For his appeal, Hartley remains deeply conservative, never quite able to engage Cubism or Matisse. Hmm. A black duck looking suspiciously like a woman in evening wear stops just short of German expressionism. Then too, then too though, he's his always he I'm sorry his always stopping short adds to the sense of exile even at home. Catadin means highest land and he made plans for high spot a house to call his own. He died in 1943 without completing it. Wow. John, I really love this. So can you see guys? Let me see where my feet is. And um I'd like you all after we read this to really you know, you could see this. Um, I'm so flattered. I hope you're not just imposing my words on you. I hope I, I'm 
I'll try to be impressed. I wrote, you're not imposing anything on me. Nobody gets to impose anything on me. I'm pretty tough. I blocked people yesterday. Okay. The logger's piece make me feel that he thought of these men larger than life men. Oh, that's interesting, Judy. Hey, Sue, how are you? Maggie, I love how even though John Haber does not really like Hartley's work, he is able to observe and discuss his art with thoroughness and clarity. Maggie, that is the truth. So one can imagine, you can imagine how much it means to me and to an artist of mine or an exhibit that I'm doing when John writes about it. Because even if it's not necessarily his thing, right? He really does his due diligence, really does his due diligence. He knows his stuff and he you don't even sense in Hartley in this that he's not a big Hartley fan. He allows you through the through his writing, through his framework to form your own opinion. And that is really a very, very important and important writing. And so I do take a lot of times when I see, is that my mother? Um, how are you? Um, you know, when I when I see reviews of artists work and they are slammed or, you know, they're excessively complimentary, whatever it is, it just feels like, I don't know. I, although Holland Cotter also, he's another favorite of mine and he's written quite a bit about my artists and such. Again, it's this really beautiful, and he's won a Pulitzer Prize. It's this really beautiful way of writing that allows us to come to the art ourselves. But he also gives us a way of being there for information we may not necessarily have at our fingertips. And so I find that extremely important. Yeah. So Stephanie, I love all the incident on the left to middle side, beautifully asymmetrical. Yes. John, my dream would be the reader saying, you know, he doesn't seem to like this, but now I really, really have to see it. Well, you know, John, that's exactly what I was saying. I was thinking, I was thinking, I really don't like this, but now I have to go to the Whitney and see this. And I, I telling you, I send John's reviews to clients and collectors all the time. Like here, you got to see this and take, take Haber Arts with you. In fact, we're going to do a cheddar segment about John Haber. So I find this, hi Mark, how are you? I, and Mike, I find this to be such an added richness to, to viewing art and accessible. It's very accessible. John doesn't make you feel like you don't know or he doesn't make you feel like you're not part of that club, whatever that club is, but invite you to go to it and form your own opinion, whether you like it or not. So we don't know necessarily you know, John has said there's an, he's eccentric. He doesn't, he didn't think he went far enough in modernism or Ashcan school. You can read between the lines of what that is, but he invites you to go, go to the Whitney like I did and look at it. And I just love that. I really do. So, um, yeah. Oh, good, mom. I'm glad it worked for you. So John, I really enjoyed this tremendously. And we are going to do another um, I'm going to go back to this one. I, I have to say, Maggie, when you posted this last week, I hadn't seen it because I, honestly, I hadn't seen the show. I didn't even see the New York Times review. So I've just, you know, I've, I've been in a real transition stage. Um, William left for college in September and it's been great for him. Just really phenomenal. Um, and so it was like a real transition in our, in our home and then uh, Cheddar and uh, flat iron and clients and everything. So I, I just, in doing smart start every day, I'm just starting to really get a rhythm going, believe it or not, of, you know, what's working, what doesn't work and, and such. And then of course I hear all day from people yesterday, I had a day listening to griping, but you know, and it's fine. Uh, but so I, my point being, Maggie, I hadn't seen this. And when I, when you posted it last week, you know, I just found it just almost shocking to look at like that blue in the sky with the clouds. There's something very primitive about it, right? I think Sally spoke to that. The mountains and then the red and this layering and this color. And I, I was drawn to it in a different way than I expected. Um, 
yeah, and the flatness of it. Um, let's see, Judy. Let's see, Judy said. Uh, Maggie says, Judy, I think they feel larger than life because of the flat picture flame plane. Yes, John. By the way, again, just to be clear, you can't go to the Whitney to see the Hartley because it was uptown at the former Whitney and is no longer there. But the Whitney's collection is still nice. Thank you for that, John. Yes. Good morning, Chris. It's good to see you. And I like the contrast of the mountain shapes and the sky shapes and handling of the water. I do too. I really like um, how we're all discussing this now with relationship to um, the review, to the to Haber Arts. And um, I want you all to make sure that you um, get Haber Arts, right? John, do you do a, do you send it out to people? Do you have a mailing list also, or you just go to the website? Do you have that kind of thing? I really love what you wrote about the, uh, this about the, the the ocean and the deepness of the sky and how small the houses are and this kind of um, imposing sensibility and twilight. I thought that was really, really something. So everybody, I'm going to post. Oh, Beatrice says the clouds look like those of Georgia O'Keeffe. Interesting. Um, Maggie says, uh, kind of like cards spilled on the table. Yeah, that, the flat layering. That flat layering, that's exactly what it is. So we're going to repost the feed, uh, John's um, the Haber Art Review here. And um, yeah, I'll see if we're going to do Hartley again for next week. Should we do the po the German and go over the review again. We'll talk about it and, and see. Um, let's see. Sally, the complementary colors of blue and orange create the, this vibrancy that is alluring along with the contrast of the clouds and skies. It is quite alluring. John Haber, no, my only attempts at self-publicity are Facebook and now, although darned if I know if it helps, Twitter. <laughs> John, I really at least, I really should at least do more to copy the relevant gallery or museums. So much to do. John, let's talk. You really need to do this as a, well, we'll talk about it, okay? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's an intense beach view, right, Beatrice? I agree with that. Isn't that an awesome painting, my mother says? Yes, Mom, it is. Hey, Jeffrey. Hey, Charles. Good to see you. John, we're going to talk more about that because I really, and I have felt for a very long time since you walked into my Madison Avenue gallery that day and my sh the show wasn't yet up. And I could sense that he did, John didn't tell me who he was, but I could sense that there was something, you know, he knew. And the show hadn't been mounted. Uh, it was probably a day late in even installing it. But anyway, since he walked into my Madison Avenue gallery in 2000 and six was it or whatever i just have always been a huge fan and admirer of this writing and this work so it needs to get out there more right just like smart start is a way of of looking at art every day we got to figure out a way to get john's words out there about art because it's a great resource hey jeffrey how are you robert edward franklin sir are you in paris or are you in brooklyn I'm not sure which one, but if you're in Paris, I hope you're having a wonderful time. John, let's see. I did introduce myself, no? Yes, Maddie, right. And we had a show with Maddie Rosenberg, fantastic artist. And Maddie also owns a very good gallery called um, Central Booking, where she really looks at um, book arts, right? And uh, really wonderful. Um, I think you did. I, I can't remember, but I remember that the show wasn't ready. And I, of course, felt terrible. But anyway, okay, if you guys really care more about the naked half men, yeah, half naked men, there's also bellows. Yeah, okay, so let's do, so John, next week, how about if we do bellows and Hartley's na half naked men? We can compare and contrast, does that sound good? And we'll use our, um, we'll use your two reviews, okay? So everybody, I want you to have a wonderful Tuesday. I, I'm not going to complain about the weather. I'm very excited on uh, Friday. Uh, la uh, two Fridays ago, I was able to take a group of French uh, diplomats to the different galleries in Chelsea um, that I picked. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to do that. I wanted to show you how I curated that day. And I will do that this week, maybe on Thursday. Um, 
But on Friday, I'm going to artist studios. And so I'm delighted to be going to Stephanie Brody Liederman's studio, to Maggie studio, right? People on our feed, Maggie um, Socks Brown, and to Song Shin studio. Um, and so it's I put together, again, a curated day for, um, for the group. So it should be very, very interesting. And John, I think you've reviewed Song Shin. One of, the, I, I, of course, I, I take John's reviews with me everywhere. All right, everyone, have a great day. John, thank you so much. And I'm really looking forward to reading this bellows and let's see what we can put together for, Tuesday, for next Tuesday, okay? Thank you all very, very much. Have a wonderful day. And tomorrow is Woman Crush Wednesday. Okay, have a good one. Bye-bye.